Hello, I'm Rainer. Welcome back to another video of Rainer's Guitar Digest. Okay, so today I'm going to share with you all on some great tips for performing on stage as a singer guitarist. Okay, so from my past two decades of experience of performing on stage, right, what I can tell you is that other than uh, crafting your skills in terms of guitaring and singing, lah, okay, bringing them on stage, right, is a whole lot of knowledge by itself. Okay, it's a whole different ballgame by itself also. So, being you just practice, you practice, you practice a lot uh, of your chords, all your uh, difficult riffs, finger style. Then when you bring it on stage, right, it's a totally different ball game. Okay, why? Because before you even start showing off your guitaring and skills, right, you have so many equipment surrounding you, surrounding you that may either aid or break your performance depending on how well you make use of them. Okay, so let's first start with personal equipment. Okay, so for guitar, right. I will definitely bring along right an extra pack of strings, okay, extra pack of strings, just in case any of them snap halfway during performance, okay. I don't have any extra pack of strings with me now, but just I, I think you can understand. So, uh, so just in case uh, they snap during performance lah. But of course, regular maintenance and string changing is also your responsibility, which is uh, which should should be there in the first place lah to minimize such uh, incidents from happening, okay. So you should always. Uh, change your strings regularly, la, do regular maintenance la, it, rather than uh, uh, wait for it to wear and tear and then break on stage, okay? But this is just a backup plan, okay? Just in case, bring an extra pack of strings uh, uh, to for your performance, la, okay? So next, I will also, um, yeah, I will also bring along two guitar capos, okay? Yeah, they, they just happen to be different design here. So I will bring two guitar capos because as I ever experienced, right, uh, of my capo breaking due to the wear and tear of the spring inside. Okay, so you know because our, our guitar capo works with works by the uh, spring mechanism inside, right? So the spring, right? If you you keep on pressing, release, pressing, release, attention, this you will make your uh, capo wear and tear. Depending on the brand and the and 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 uh, the quality of your cup of your capo, lah, Okay, so. I will definitely bring along two two capos just in case that happens. Okay, so just you think about it. In case you are the only guitarist there, then you there's only one capo, and you cannot, you cannot uh, uh bring up your keys and everything. Okay, so bring two capos along. Ah, uh, this is one great tip. Okay, so um next is a no brainer here that I will always uh stand by my clip on tuner. Okay, clip on tuner. I will always stand by it here, so I can tune it uh whenever I want in between my songs. Okay. Um, then if you will be using picks, right, okay, uh, guitar picks here, you will be using guitar picks, right, get a pick holder and paste it uh, at any place of the guitar that's convenient for you, okay, so what is a pick holder? A pick holder looks like this, okay, look behind here, this is a pick holder, use it to place a number of picks inside, so it's actually very convenient, okay, you, you don't need to put it in your pocket, put it in your wallet, you can just put in a pick holder, for me, I usually paste it uh, at the back of my guitar head here so I can assess it whenever I'm, because I play more finger picking so sometimes I will use pick to uh, do certain strumming okay so some of uh, well for some guitarists right they they usually they they will paste their pick holder at this side at this uh, this part of the guitar or sometimes near the uh, near the sound hole or near the pick guard near the pick guard over here so they can assess it like immediately when they want to switch from finger picking to strumming yeah they can just pick it up from here qu quite quickly Okay, so pick holder, which is very useful. And next, okay, bring along uh, spare batteries uh, for your built-in pickup and preamp also. So sometimes our battery, maybe sometimes it's maybe due to the preamp having some issues. Um, the, the preamp may have some issues and it's draining power super fast. That it happens before for some of my friends' uh, guitars also. So of course, they need to, you need to re uh, either, either change, change your preamp pickup to a new one or what, but usually uh, bring spare batteries is a good habit, okay? So just in case your sets, your your, your performance is very long, maybe you, you do 3 times 45 minutes and your batteries drain up quite fast, and bring some spare batteries along, yeah, so that you can change between sets, okay? Then uh, also bring along spare cables, okay? In case the ones provided by venue have issues, okay? I, I have some trust issues in equipment provided by venue. So usually for me, right, I'm extra cautious uh, and will bring along uh, spare XLR cable, spare instrument cable, and a guitar DI box, okay? As you, if you are, in case you all don't know cables, I'm sure you all know what it is, but for DI box, 
this this is a DI box an example of a DI box. Usually venues will provide, but um usually I will bring my own also. I bring along a passive one. Okay, if you have if you have an active one, you also it will be good lah. But usually uh I buy a passive one which is cheap lah, quite cheap. Okay, so a DI box uh as a bring along a spare one too lah. Okay, just in case the one at the venues have uh have problems. Okay, so um. Finally, right for guitar, right I will also bring along a compact foldable guitar stand. Okay, it will look like this. Hold on. Okay, so this is a a foldable guitar stand that I that I got. Okay, it's actually foldable. You see, I can actually fold it up and keep it in my guitar bag or keep it in my bag. Okay, so it's actually quite compact. Compact compared to those with uh, long stands that support the guitar neck. I don't think that is needed. This one, this is a, actually a very good stand. It just hold. By putting your whole guitar body on it, and it will it will hold very very well because this one the bottom are all uh, rubber like material, and so the the grip is very very good. Yeah, so it and sometimes venue they don't provide guitar stands just for your info. So I think I I feel that you should get one for yourself and bring along and so that you can secure securely put put it at at at, at, at the at the spot beside you lah. Yeah, so that your guitar won't fall. Okay, so that's for guitar stand. Okay, so let's move on to uh, repertoire and chord sheets. Okay, so I know many musicians um, use tablet or uh, iPad or, or laptops, but for me, right, I'm still very old school, and I prefer the old trusty paper, uh, paper chord sheets and old old trusty file, lah, Okay, so reason because they are in they they are big enough to see for my aging eyes, lah. <laughs> and I can can always write on them. When I needed to take some notes on on them during performance, so and of course ah uh, yeah, talking about writing, so bring some writing materials like a pencil and the eraser so that you can write things on your chord sheets when needed lah. Okay, that is if you if you bring file and paper chord sheets, and not iPad or this lah. Okay, so for file right, for file I usually buy a, I usually buy a black, mm, I usually use a black uh, A4 ring file. Okay, A4 ring file. Okay, so um I also bring along clips. On the file, okay. So I also buy. I also bring along some clips, so to prevent uh your your chord sheets from being blown away by by any any possible wind. You know, sometimes they have the aircons and venue aircons, or, or or usually outdoor, the wind they will actually blow away your 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 chord sheet, or they will blow up your chord sheet while you're playing halfway. So um, so that's for the 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 file and chord sheets. Um. So um, next thing is I will also arrange my chord sheets right. In sequence, according to my repertoire sequence of that night lah, or of, of the performance, and I also print an overview table of my uh, repertoire song names and corresponding keys used for quick, so that I can have a quick reference when I need to. So, uh, example uh, of this uh, overview table, I will actually will actually look like this. Yeah, so you will have the song name, the 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 artist, and the key corresponding to the key that you'll be playing in. Okay, so usually I put this at the left side of my file where I have a pocket okay oops so I put it at the left side of my file where there's a pocket so that I can have a quick overview whenever I need to okay okay next is something awesome that I come up with that uh, will definitely aid you uh, in your performance and that is color code your chord sheets okay by parts of the um, intro verses pre-chorus and chorus Okay, color code. What does it mean by color code? I will usually color code um the 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 my chord sheets lah in terms of the intro, pre-chorus, chorus, uh, bridge, all this. Okay, so it will look something similar like this for my chord sheet. Okay, this is something. This is a specialty that I'm very proud of myself because I I, I actually do this for my uh, for my chord sheets lah. They are also posted on online on my website talkingchord.com. So usually what I do is um for intros right intros those non vocal parts like the intro interlude outro I will usually co color code them in black and for the verses right I will usually color code them in blue and let's say there's two verses three verses I'll alternate them between dark blue and light blue and for pre chorus and things like bridges right all these special parts I will use purple color okay uh, it's not shown here okay so this one is just a simple one with blue and red. And for chorus, I usually use red. And then um, any other parts? Ah, uh, no, that's all. So, why? What? How does it? How does color code helps? Okay, this it actually helps you um, when you need to take your eyes off your guitar 
court sheet of, of your take your eyes off your court sheet to look at your guitar to play certain difficult parts. Sometimes when we need to take our eyes off our court sheet, we need to look at our guitar. But when we look back, right, eh, suddenly you lost lost yourself. Eh, where am I? Then you suddenly stop playing. Because sometimes the court sheet, if you print in black and black and white, right, is you are actually when you turn back, it's actually a mess of black, black text. Especially when you're on stage and all the lights shining at you and Sometimes even the lighting is poor, you, when you look back right at your court sheet, you will not be able to find where you are, you'll get lost. <laughs> so color coding is very useful so that when you look back right, at least you know you, you are in a verse example, you are in a verse, then you know, hey, verse is blue color. So your, your eyes quickly recognize where, you, where, where, where is it, where is the blue color, yeah, so you can come back quickly, yeah. So color coding right is really a very useful way uh, to, to, to code your court sheets right, so that you can view it properly. Yeah, and in poor lighting conditions, and especially when you need to take your eyes off your court sheet for a while to look at your guitar and look back. Okay, so finally, yes, I will still bring along a tablet or iPad. Okay, for what? Okay, just for those impromptu song dedications so that I can search online for quick court sheets. Uh. Okay, so these are the repertoire that uh, I never prepare, I never bring my paper court sheets along, so I will actually bring, still bring an iPad along. Yeah, just to, uh, uh, to, to, to cater to the the, the impromptu court, uh, impromptu dedications and song requests lah. okay so for but for iPad usually uh, if I would recommend I would recommend you to get uh, at least a 12.9 inch one lah, so that you can have a better view okay please don't get iPad mini or even like those um, uh, uh, 10 10 point even 10.9 inch is actually also not not so ideal for viewing lah. so I will get something that's at least 12.9 inch lah, okay for like an iPad Pro 12.9, okay, you you'll be a better better uh, uh tablet to view your court sheets, okay. Okay, so for next equipment, right, let's talk about the music stand, okay. So for music stand, right, I will usually put it at a comfortable eye level so that um you you can see your court sheet in full view, right, and you will need to also consider your mic stand in front of you, which I will talk about it later in the video. So remember not to elevate your music stand too high. Okay, that it blocks your audience from seeing you. So, for example, my my this is my music stand. Okay, so imagine it blocks you. Okay, you can't you, you, the the audience can't see you and you can't see the audience too. So, you definitely have to put it. Sometimes I'll put it a bit slight sideways so that I can still uh see the court sheet from from the side and also see the audience also. So not too high, not too low. Eye level, comfortable eye level, so that you can see your uh see your court sheets. Okay, so okay then next let's talk about a microphone stand. Okay. I'll bring the micro step, microphone stand here in first. Okay, so this is a microphone stand that I'm using. Um, usually, uh, I will usually place my mic stand either diagonal left, that means uh, on my left side, or diagonal right. Okay, and definitely not in front of you. Okay, if it's in front of you, the mic stand will be in a very awkward position. You will be in a very awkward position to look it to to. It will block your court sheet in front of you. So, so. Microphone stand and adjust your mic in such a way that it doesn't block your your, your vision of your court sheet also lah. So don't 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 make your mic stand this way, okay? And uh, sometimes people I see people doing like that. Then then how how you gonna look at your court sheet? It definitely will block your vision. So I will definitely bring the uh, the T joint down and then I will twist the the mic upwards like that, so that at least uh, the mic is still directing at your at your uh, at your mouth while you sing and you can still have a full view of your court sheets. So okay, then next thing, uh, this is something that I will recommend you to get is an uh on stage. This is the the brand name. It's called on stage. Uh, uh it's a a cup holder. Okay, so you can actually tuck, you can actually um uh fix this cup holder onto your mic stand or your music stand, and you can put your cups drinks on it. Okay, so that you can drink your water <laughs> within reach. Okay, so that you no need to go. Off stage to the table to take the cup of water, you can just put it here. Yeah, so it's very actually very convenient. Lah. So, and it also prevent any accidental uh, spills. Okay, so that's all for my tips. And I hope that uh, they will benefit your performance by making you more comfortable and secure in your gigs. Okay, so all right, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new. And remember to subscribe, follow, like, or comment if you have any questions. Thank you and see you in the next video. Goodbye.